from these superpowers come and they say we never see that kind of submission, loyalty, obedience and love that we see his companions have for him. He is a sultan without the title, he is a sultan without the palace, he is a sultan without... But he has more power than what we've even seen with our emperors. So those ones who are ruling, they are the Amirul Mu'minin. They are the ones who are what? Who are representing the Prophet Because the Prophet is the one who is representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Which is why Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq is saying, call me the one who is representing the Prophet. And Hazrat Umar didn't say he's a Khalifa. He's saying, call me the one who's representing Abu Bakr. He didn't say he's representing the Prophet too. He's saying, call me a representative of Abu Bakr, the Khalifa of Abu Bakr. And the same thing with Hazrat Usman, same thing with Hazrat Ali. When it is understood that it is not theirs, it's not their title, they're representing someone else and someone else, then you can stick, you can just put Khalifa there. It's okay, because it's understood already. You don't have to say now, yeah, the 40th Khalifa of Islam, then you, uh, before you mention his name, you have to mention that he is this and this and this and this and this. Did they know, my Sultan, did they know that the Hilafat was going to be veiled? Being a representative of the Prophet, والسلام, being the Khalifa, meaning they're not just rulers of this world. All the Sultans of the Ottoman Empire, they were all the beloveds of Allah. They were all friends of Allah. They have all achieved high ranks of sainthood, of wilayat. And there are some of them that their level of their maqam was so high that they were not able to even rule properly so much because they are already in that station where this world is not appearing as it's appearing to us and they cannot rule properly. Which is why it is not only common, it must be for them as Sultan Mehmed Fatih Han, as Sultan Selim, as even Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, that they're able to see openly the Prophet والسلام, standing in front of them or Hizr standing in front of them to have that connection because they're all sultans holding on to the Islam of the Holy Prophet والسلام. it's not the Islam of nationalism it's not the Islam of Turks or Persians or Chinese or Indians they were holding the Prophet والسلام, the highest And because of that love, they were able to bring all so many people to come to Islam that has not been achieved for hundreds of years. It has not been achieved. Especially bringing Islam now to the West. Bringing Islam all the way to Austria, to Hungary. And their plan was to bring it further west. Their plan was to bring it all the way to where? Rome. Because this is what the Prophet is saying. This is what Allah is saying. So, did they have that spiritual connection with the Prophet? Of course they did. They are not normal people. The soldiers at that time, when the, when the um, Ottomans were weakest. They were not normal people like us. If you, th if you see them, you think that they are saints. But they are normal. One of the biggest fitnas that they make, and they're putting everything on the shoulders of Sultan Abdul Hamid Han, talking about that incident, March 15th incident. There was a revolt. One of the things that when they were trying to modernize the army, and there was so much fitna that was happening. It wasn't just modernization, uh, the way that we understand that they're making them to wear Western clothes and to have Western drills and to have Western uh, um, arms and everything. And people were opposed because they were so backwards. No, the Ottomans, the Muslims, the East especially, they are always the ones who are curious to find out what is happening. 
and to take the highest technology available at that time. Look at India today, look at China today, look at Japan. That fitna happened because they were not trying to change them from the outside. They were trying to change the soldiers from the inside to make them like, to make them that religion has no place in the army, they say. There is no Islam in the barracks, stopping them from praying. They deliberately didn't give them water to make them to clean. They say, now we are Western, we have to use toilet paper. You understand? They turn off the water that they couldn't even make ghusl. The soldiers, I have to say this during a Juma to put it down properly, the fitna that was happening at that time. Because you know why? They want to get rid of the army from the religious people. And at that time, 99% of them they were. They want to bring in people who had no faith. Because in Islam, if you're in Janabat, you don't even drink or eat anything. So the soldiers will go through the whole day not eating or drinking anything. And some of them will get very sick, some of them will fall, some of them will die. And they let that to happen, deliberately. So the Sultan, yeah, with that connection, bringing spirituality, bringing tariqat, how tariqat is able to survive and spread to the rest of the world. What? Is it because of the Abbasis or the Ummawis? It's because of the Ottomans, because they were awliya and they were following awliya, they were following sheikhs and they were sending sheikhs and awliya to the rest of the world to bring that Islam of the Sahabi Kiram, the Islam of the Holy Prophet That yes, they understood when the time was up. Because the Holy Prophet had told the Sahabis everything that is going to happen until Judgment Day. He had told them everything. Some of them remembered, some of them did not remember. And that knowledge is passed down from century to century. Not in books. If you're running to look at books like uh, that writer running here, running there, what is it called? Da Vinci Code. Uh, looking at this and the uh, idiots, still idiots. Your knowledge is still beneath our feet. Your knowledge is not coming from the heart. You think something that is so secret you're going to give to other people? You're going to put it in pictures and this and this. Scholars are still stuck with the paper. The paper you can burn, you can change, you can write words. But what is in the heart you cannot take out. And it can be safeguarded. Yes. So the Sultan, he knew. Especially Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan, he knew that his time was up. Following the command and the orders of the Holy Prophet, he's saying, watch these things, when these things happen, pull back. Pull back. Just as what we are doing now. Pull back. Uh, which he did. Although some generals, some pashas came to him and say, we can still fight this, we can still win. And the Khalifa is saying, no, that Hadith is speaking to me. Now is not the time for that. Because there's so much confusion now. Now we entered into the age of tyranny and confusion. It has to pass. It has to pass for it to come out from that age. Longer that we are stopping, longer that age is going to be, you let it go. Yes, they knew. Of course they did. And they let certain things to happen because even their own sense of what is and what is not, they are understanding Allah is ruling. Allah is ruling. Did they let anything just to happen like that? No. They lived their lives, especially Sultan Abdul Hamid Khan, for 33 years. He finished the debt that the Ottoman Empire uh, that he inherited, not because of the previous Khalifas, but because uh, the Masons were inside, the unbelievers were inside, and they were bringing everything down. They were causing so much confusion in the empire that they were entering into wars that they should win, but because of their betrayal, everything is lost. 
He inherited all of that for 33 years. He finished all the debts and everything. He was pulling people out. And he was spreading now Islam as an empire. Who were the first ones to betray him? Arabs. Why? Because they have jealousy. They think we should be the masters, but not understanding what is the meaning of that. Because when it comes to ruling, you should have, when it comes to Khalifa, the one who should rule is the one who must have the most taqwa. Correct? The one who has the most taqwa should rule. And if that one who has the most taqwa and he also has power, that is the best combination. Some, they have taqwa, but they don't have that power. The one, because this is the world, the one who has the power is going to rule. But if there is a choice, of course the one who has the most taqwa is going to rule. And taqwa, it is not the monopoly of the Arabs. Holy Prophet is saying, there is no, the Arab is no higher than the Ajam, the Ajam is not higher than the Arab, except for taqwa. The one who has the most taqwa is the one who is going to rule. How you can have taqwa when you are filled with betrayal? How? How are you going to have taqwa when you are allying yourself with the enemies of Islam? How? You can call yourself whatever. You can even call yourself Ahlil Bayt, which they were. But is that action now according to the footsteps of the Prophet ﷺ or not? You understand? So, we're entering now into a new, more accelerated fitna that is going to happen. More darkness <coughs> is coming. Without the complete darkness, the light cannot be seen. Pull ourselves back, be busy with ourselves. Those who like, they listen. Those who don't like, don't argue with them. But those who like what we're saying, come, you're welcome. Those who don't like and they want to argue, don't argue, walk away. This is also part of the meaning. Those who are sitting, better than those who are standing. Because that hadith also is very similar to what? Huh? That hadith is very similar to other hadith and other ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's reminding definitely that ayat saying people who remember Allah. Hmm? They remember Allah what? While they're lying down, while they're standing up. While they're walking, while they're busy, remembering Allah. And that hadith is also reminding of another hadith that the Prophet is saying, what? If you're angry, and if you're standing, sit down. And if you're still angry, you're still not going away, lie down. If it's not going away, go renew your wudu with cold water and pray to rakat. That is for that situation and it's for other situations also. Meaning, stand down. It's not just literally to go and to make your wudu. Stand down. Find things that's going to make you to cool down. Turn to Allah. Because it is better, especially in this situation now that we are living in. May Allah raise your station high, inshallah. May they look down with us with the himmat and with the shafaat and with the support. And may they ask Allah for us, for us to remain steadfast, for us to remain loyal, to be clean and to be sincere, to be good ones for our shaykh, to be good ones for each other and not to be pulled into the confusion of this world. Wa min Allahu tafiq al fatiha Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.